All right, wanting to answer a question from the community about whether the Sony A6400 paired up with the Sigma 16 millimeter is a good combo for vlogging. Main reason being that the 6400 does not have stabilization in the camera, and of course the lens is not stabilized either. If you want my answer up front, I'm gonna tell you that it is. And I'm also gonna tell you, for those of you who've asked whether you should get a gimbal for it, I just, vlogging with a gimbal just seems to be so obtrusive and having to manage that piece of equipment to be able to tell your story I don't know, it just doesn't seem like a good way to go. And even if you have a camera with IBIS in it, I've always said for photography, it means a lot. For video, and especially for Sony, I mean, I love Sony, I film with Sony, so I'm not trying to bash them, but their IBIS is not great, plain and simple. For photography, yeah, for video, not so much. So if I'm doing a lot of looking around and not so much at the camera, it's actually because there have been sightings of bears in the last few days and they're with their cubs. So I'm just double checking that I'm not coming up on a family of bears or a mother and the cub because this is their territory. And I guess if I end up making it back and you're watching this video, then all went well. But I did just talk to a friend the other day and she was saying that she was with a group and looking at some wildflowers and the group kind of like went ahead and as she looked up she was like oh that's a really black rock and then the really black rock started to move and then look at her all is well she just sort of gave them the path and went elsewhere but that being said you just gotta be mindful <laughs> Just another thing that is goes beyond stabilizing your shot is to stay safe when you're vlogging. Now, I've had people ask me about 120 frames, and of course, yeah, when you wanna slow things down and you need extra frames to work with in your B-roll, your accentuating shots, go for it. But for your A-roll, and anytime you can film in 4K, having that extra data to play around with, especially with 8-bit and in your post-production, you're gonna want 4K. But moving back to the 120, you're moving into HD, which is still good in the Sony cameras, but you're losing the face detection and then your focus isn't always going to be nailed. So being behind the camera and working with your aperture, your ISO exposure and dialing in your, your focus, then that is fine because you're behind the camera, you can look at the screen, you can adjust as you need to, but if I'm always looking at the screen here from my A-roll and my talking head and not talking to you, that's a problem. Now, I have talked about the A6600, which does have the IBIS in there. And here's an advantage, and of course, if you're in the States, because oftentimes it might go on sale, you know, two to $300 off the original price of $1498, is that if you have the IBIS, then you have the ability to save money on lenses, because if you don't always have to buy an optical steady shot, let's say an OSS lens, like a Sony lens, and get something like the Sigma, which is gonna be cheaper than most of the Sony offerings out there, then maybe the 6600 would be a better option for you. But I know in other countries, many of you have said that the 6400 is still a bargain and the 6600 may be significantly more out of reach financially, or you just can't get access to it. And of course, I've mentioned this before in a video with the Sigma 16 millimeter being open, being able to be open at 1.4, you can blur that background. And so it does this like Jedi eye trick or something. It doesn't stabilize the shot necessarily. It just, you blur the background, you're focused on my face, and yes, you're getting some shake, 
but it just gives this perspective of being more stabilized. It's not true stabilization, but it's just a little bit of a trick. But don't make the rookie move of if you're out in the sun and getting blown out because you're open. So just be mindful that that ND filter is going to help you and that you don't always want to be open at 1.4 because it's gonna ruin your footage. I've definitely made that mistake. All right, well, I was actually gonna go up there, but apparently it's, uh, it's closed off. There's some bats up there that they want to kind of protect and doing what they need to be doing. So I'm not heading where there are bats. So I'm good to be climbing, bouldering, whatnot. Bats, I appreciate all the mosquitoes you eat, but I'm good to just kind of keep my distance. And of course, don't be afraid to actually look around. You're getting all of these uh, fun shots and beautiful shots and you're looking through the, the viewfinder, your, your screen, but take a moment and enjoy the fruits of your labor and just kind of soak it all in. Even if the sun is literally right in front of me blowing out my, my whole face. I mean, I mean, the sun looks at me, it's like, ooh, look, breakfast. Mm -hmm. 